Hey, welcome back everyone, Toysh is here, and I'm back yet again for yet another Mezco video, and today, very excited. This is a figure I've had my eye on ever since it was unveiled about 15 years back, but lo and behold, they finally shipped out from Entertainment Earth, which I do recommend buying your Mezcos from, just in case you want to cancel and whatnot, because it does take some time, usually with them, and tastes do change over time. But, lo and behold, yes, we have a classic Spider-Man. And with what Spider-Man has become these days, well, this is a breath of fresh air, because it's the one, the only, the amazing Spider-Man. And the box is covered in all that glorious, original, OG Spider-Man artwork, and I absolutely love it. Top to bottom, left to right, amazing Spider-Man every which way. It's going to be basically the same looking Spider-Man amidst all those old comic panels, but you get the idea. And again, it's nice to see because I'm going to be honest, with what Spider-Man has become these days, it's just not for me. And that's totally okay. We need new audiences and such. We don't need the same old, same old, but I love the old school Spider-Man, the idea of Spider-Man being a force of good. It's just Spider-Man. There's not 15 million spider people, right? There's not a Spider-Verse, <laughs> which, let's be honest, is the dumbest thing ever. I mean, it, nothing matters anymore with multiverses and whatnot, so that's just my take. And then, of course, it's very reminiscent for the Spider-Man the Animated Series from the 90s, which holds true to all those old classic Spider-Man tropes, a lot of which can be seen within this action figure. So for that alone, well, this is going to be an absolute blast. So sit back, relax, grab yourself a nice hot cup of coffee. This is a look at the brand new Mezco 112 scale, The Amazing Spider-Man. And for those interested in this figure, or just Mezco figures, action figures in general, later on in the video, I will tell you how you can utilize all the different coupons for Entertainment Earth that, with my links, will give you 10% off all in-stock items, and then, of course, free shipping with orders over a certain amount. So stay tuned for that if you want to stick through the end of the vid. But now, bring me pitches of Spider-Man, and lo and behold, inside the box, we have three designated trays of just every action figure accessory for Spider-Man imaginable. There is a lot to talk about in the box, so we'll go tray by tray, specifically with tray numero trace. Now, this one is going to be basically the stands and the display bases, which, hey, Mezco does offer some great stands and some great display bases, let's be honest. Now, you get the big blue circular base, amazing Spider-Man screen printed on there, and it has a little peg hole which you pop out and you can place the long clear stand in, and it works really well. Never had a problem with anything Mezco stands. Now, this right here is interesting. It's very much like a mouse pad, right? Just think of that, the texture and everything else. It's also a display base. You would see this a lot in old school Spider-Man comic books, maybe on the wall, maybe on the ground. You get the idea. But he does stand on it nicely. It's very clingy, right? If you have a mirrored surface, it will stay put. You don't have to worry about it slipping out. And like I said, it is very rubbery, so it moves around for you. But I'll be honest, I really wish there was a way to put this on a wall somehow, being that it kind of reminds me of the lights, of the belts, whatnot, Spider-Man animated comics and all that jazz. That would have been kind of cool, even for a light-up feature, right? A belt that lights up, but more on the light-up features in just a few, because we have the clear plastic stands with a little addendum now that you have for this alternate way to display this Spider-Man. So you got this big claw arm, which will go around the figure's waist, keep him aloft, they're always good, including this other smaller adapter piece, which will be utilized to house the spider sense accessory, right? So you kind of just fit it all together and I'll admit it did take me a second to understand how exactly how to do all this. So basically it's a bunch of detachments and then building upon what you already have. And yes, there's plenty of articulation in this stand, which is nice. Like I said, the clamp will keep the figure nice and sturdy, nothing loose. And yes, once you get it all situated, that's a nice looking web flipping amazing Spider-Man. Now for this right here, the web shield, man oh man, 
Does that take me back to the Toy Biz days, right? I love the look of this. I like the sheen. It simply just goes around his hand, or you can detach the hand, pop it through his wrist. You get the idea. Very self-explanatory, but that rocks. I absolutely love the way this web shield looks. Now, you do get this little key right here. It's just a yellow piece that you're gonna use to pop open the Spider-Man head and place these two smaller than small batteries in to make Spidey's eyes glow, which is cool. And there is a little Gomez portrait right there on the key. You also get this 1 12th collective baggie. It's just a little plastic bag, but Mezco makes lots of little tiny parts and pieces, and this makes it so you don't lose them. Now. Moving on to Trey Numero Dos. You get a ton of hands, more hands than you'll ever need, but he's a very handsy Spider-Man. And you get all the basics, thumbs up, finger pointing, web whipping, wall crawling, you get the idea. One thing that I would have liked to have seen was a more designated item holding hand. There are variations on them, of course, but ones that were just a solid, this is a gripping hand. All of them are kinda, every which way you kind of have to make do. But all the webbing looks nice, the red is nice, all of them just are great. But yes, it's very overwhelming. There are certainly a lot of hands. Now, you do get this piece of webbing right here, and you can kind of use that as a web slingshot, kinda, sorta, right? But you're really gonna use this for the web parachute. But more on that in just a second. Now, you do get the spider tracers, and they are very teeny tiny, right? Look how tiny it is even for the Spider-Man. But that is an accessory that is just fantastic, and that is really where this Mezco Spider-Man shines. It is another Spider-Man figure, but it really is the accessories that bring it to life like the webbing, Spider-Man that has webbing, that's functional, thwipping out webs. That's what I wanna see, and that's really where the whole price tag apparently comes in, right? Mezcos are not cheap, but at least they do it right so you can properly web up the villains, right? So in all the poses and how it attaches, that rocks, including this web lasso. So just like the web thwip, web bolt, whatever you wanna call it, this is, the ensnarement web, and I totally like that. So when you wanna thwip it out and catch a villain like Electro, even though this is his first battle and we all know how this is gonna go, that just looks awesome, including some bendy wire webbing. Now, I will say this, it's very bendy. It does the trick. It will bend around every figure that you probably could conceive, right? It's long enough to do so. Does it really look like webbing? Kinda, sorta, right? Maybe could've been done just a little bit differently, but it's cool, along with this basic web line, right? This is the line where you could just have Spider-Man hanging from it, and it has a little bit of a hook at the top, so you can hook it onto something and totally make do. Or, you can just have it and have Spider-Man thwipping all over the place, right? So, you hold it in one end, he's holding it in the other hand, that's cool, that's a Spider-Man figure, right? And he can totally hold it like he's holding on to a rhino or a scorpion tail, something like that. Now, you do have a Spider-Man mask, and this is the, I've taken my mask off. It's all gloom and doom, how can I be Spider-Man anymore? Spider-Man mask. The webbing doesn't go all the way around, it's simply on the front, which is totally fine. You're really only gonna look at it one way anyways, and you can take the Peter Parker head portrait and have him holding the mask, which does leave us with tray number one, and this is where all the goodies are, right? Like this Spider-Man webbing backpack. Again, how toy biz of them. I love the way that this looks, along with the web shield, you got a web backpack. That is just so cool, I wish it opened up, right? You could go on his back, just like you would put on a backpack, so you just put his arms back and slip it on, easy peasy. So you can have him posed out, running along the rooftops, with all his gear inside. Now, you do get a newspaper, Daily Bugle, Spider-Man's identity, still a mystery. All of it very legible, all printed nicely on the back right here, Spider-Man versus Electro, Spider-Man's identity soon to be revealed, yada yada. J. Jonah Jameson's Daily Bugle. I wish this opened, or I wish that there were pages inside, but it is very nice that it is plastic, it's not paper. So for that alone, I do appreciate it. I can totally make do with a plastic newspaper. And when you have him holding it with the designated hands, of which you kind of figure it out, right? You can make do with whatever hands you want to use, 
but it totally looks cool. Now you do get the spider tracer device. And that again, when was the last time we've had a spider tracer device, especially an old school looking one, right? With the little antenna and whatnot. That's cool. So you have one hand holding the spider tracer, the other one holding the actual spider tracer device. You get the idea, totally rad. And as I've said, the spider tracers themselves are so tiny. They do have nice details, but keep them in the tray or put them in the baggie because if you drop them, my God. <laughs> Yeah, this is this thing. Spider tracker, spider tracers, they're awesome. Totally love the way that this looks. Now, you do get the camera, and it's an old fashioned Peter Parker clickety camera. And again, that is an awesome accessory. One that I think about that Peter Parker definitely uses, right? Especially in starting out. And he has a designated hand where you can point and click and shoot. And that is just so darn cool. Posing them out with a camera. That is a Spider-Man figure right there. And the camera does come with two variations on the strap. So when you hook them into the camera, you can have Spider-Man swinging around, have it around his neck, yada, yada. The little tab simply fits into the sides of the camera. You get the idea. Totally works. Now, this right here is a little bit overly complicated for the spider sensibility. And that's where the clear plastic stand with this additional part comes into play. I totally thought that this is something that would just plug in to the back of one of the heads, which I totally would have preferred. It's a whole fan-dangled mess of getting it to work and display just perfectly, but when you do, yes, it does achieve that. But I would have said, make it simple, right? Keep it simple for the love of God. Just have it plug in, have it attach around his neck. That would have been fine in and of itself. And it does look great when you get it situated with his half mask, right? How very comic booky. but I digress. It's an overcomplicated mess of getting it all just perfectly. It could have just fit in one of the back of the heads, part of the head removes, put it in the back. I don't care, perfect. Or better yet, just have something that just kind of hooks around the top of his head like I have seen other people make and I have in my collection. Now you get the top parts of the web parachute. And again, like I said, I love the way all the webbing looks, right? A Spider-Man with webbing. So you take this part right here and hook it in to the four hook holes, get it all ready to go. And this is honestly one of my favorite accessories. It's always been one of my favorite aspects of Spider-Man and his ingenuity with how the webbing works. It making no sense, but when he's fallen from great heights and there's nowhere to swing around, of course a web parachute makes sense, right? And he did it in spades quite a few times during Spider-Man the Animated Series, which is always nice to see, right? Kind of sort of works, but only kept them aloft for a certain while, but hey, totally rad, right? Now, in terms of displayability though, you grab the hands that work, you get the clear plastic stand, you just make it look nice on your shelf. And yes, when you have this all displayed out with him in the web parachute, gliding safely down to the Hudson River, it's definitely awesome. So I appreciate that a whole heck of a lot. The head portraits, little bits of a mixed bag. Let's be honest with you. This Peter Parker head portrait is supposed to be when he's younger in the comics, right? Which they kind of sort of achieve. I like the, the face and the hair and the way it's painted, but the actual stare looks like there's nobody there, right? It's just, he's in a trance, which doesn't work all too well when you want to take photos. He just looks kind of lifeless. There's nothing behind the eyes. Now, one aspect that I do like of this figure are the removable glasses. Yes, Spider-Man gets his powers, no use for the glasses anymore, but that is a classic looking Peter Parker. And they do situate nicely, but just don't touch them very much because they'll go flying off and then you gotta look around your office to try and find them on the floor. So through and through, yes, this is very effective even though my glasses have a bit of a schmutz right there on the lens, but hey, I like the way that this looks. And for the thousand yard stare head portrait, I think the glasses do a solid job in adding just a little bit more life to him, a little bit more nerdiness of Peter Parker. That's been missing in a lot of Spider-Man action figures. But this one here with the slice down the middle, Spider-Man on one side, Peter Parker on the other, that is well done. That is a head portrait right there. And it's one that I'm just so thankful to have because you don't see this a whole heck of a lot. It's just rad to see, and very much old school Spider-Man, what I like about Spider-Man. So you put the little spider sense behind him, and you're good to go. And I think that that looks great. Again, very much the old school comic books 
which I totally appreciate. And then you get the basic wide-eyed Spider-Man. He's just having a conversation, normal, everyday neighborhood Spider-Man. The webbings are all sculpted in, and it looks good. For the most part, all the black hits the marks, so that's cool. This one right here, same head portrait, you say. No, this is the one that will light up. So there is not much of a difference other than one of them lights up, one of them doesn't. I would have liked to have seen just a little bit more of a difference between the two, just to have different expressions. Now, this is where the key and the batteries come into play, right? And I would have thought, maybe you could use the key to grab this little piece to pull this part up. No dice, unfortunately, and you can't really fit your fingernail in there either. So get a tiny little screwdriver, something like that, go very easy. You're gonna wanna pull the lid up just a bit, grab it, and just slightly tug and pull it out so that you can start to see the area where you're gonna put the batteries in. And my oh my, isn't that a challenge? So challenge to everyone to see who can get that on the first try without dropping the batteries somewhere around your home, right? So you get them all in face down, both of them face down inside the device. Just keep that in mind. And then you got the little switch right here, which I recommend using the key and it lights up. A-okay, right? Number one, we're good to go. And my recommendation is don't put it back in the head before you make sure that it switches on, right? And lo and behold, turn the lights off and it lights up, baby. That is cool, that's a nice effect. It goes well with the light up Ghost Rider. I like when Mezco does the light up figures. It is a lot of fun. They do make for quite a display, a nice presence, it's something different. And I totally appreciate a Spider-Man with some light up eyes, right? That's just very cool. Getting the batteries in, that's another story, but at least it's very effective. And again, get him web swinging throughout the city with a stand and the webs and it's a setup, but it does look very cool. And one other aspect of the accessories is the full on web blast around the face, right? Webbing up any type of villain that you want. And it is big enough that it will fit on the majority of villains faces. So you can do the old web flip and you can get Green Goblin properly covered. <laughs> Phrasing. Now, the actual Spider-Man figure. About time we got to this point, right? There was a lot to talk about, but I'll save you some time if you're done with this video. It's a pretty cool looking Spider-Man. Now, I'm not a huge fan of all the stitching around the costume, but it is the way to get the costume on this little six inch figure. So I'm not gonna nitpick it, because on the front, it is very effective, but on the seams on the legs, you see those and whatnot. It's a nice body type for Spider-Man. The only problems that I have with this is in the vinyl type of the red on the suit when you start to move it around, the ab crunch and whatnot, you will start to see little teeny tiny crease lines. Yes, it is very form fitting, as you can totally tell. I recommend getting to know the fabric before, right? It's kind of straightening it out. It will pick up every little piece of dust imaginable, so keep that in mind, and make sure your hands are clean. No Cheetos dust, right? But in the terms of the red where it meets the costume, that is where, over time, I don't care what you want to say, yes, that will eventually erode. All material does. Look at your clothes itself, right? Yes. That's a thing, so go very easy on it, don't go crazy. I didn't go crazy on it, but yes, you will eventually see little teeny tiny creases. So that's one aspect of Mezco figures that I have to keep in mind to myself. Yes, it looks cool. Yes, I'm like OCD about, I don't wanna ruin the figure, right? The seams inside, they work with you. The material is very stretchy. I didn't have any problems with the blue parts of the cloth material. It's very stretchy, it will work with you, but keep in mind, don't overdo it. And for me, I don't leave Mezco figures in crazy positions where the material gets all bunched up for too long because that's just how I am, so keep that in mind. But of course, you're free to pose out and do it however you want. But I like how this Spider-Man moves for the most part. I would say with the arms, the elbows, the knees, the legs, that all works, the head portraits, they all get nice rotation, nice movement out of them. The neck could have moved just a little bit more, I will say. Is the head a little bit too big? Kind of goes either way with me. There isn't much of an ab crunch, this Spider-Man, unfortunately. You see how the material will kind of bunch up. 
Mezco toys are toys that wear pajamas. Let's be honest, little tiny doll people, okay? You will see some creases. It's a suit. It would crease like you're wearing a suit. That's the whole thing about it. If you don't like that, stick with plastic figures because those are a heck of a lot cheaper and then you don't have that whole OCD kick in and say, well, am I going to ruin this figure? Am I going to do this? Am I going to do that? You don't want to ruin a $120 figure, right? But you also want to have fun with it. So if you can control it like I have to, <laughs> yes, it's a very fun figure to pose around. Although I do wish he had more of an ab crunch. He has all the basic articulation you could want in the legs. You can make him do pretty much whatever a Spider-Man can. Yes, like I said, he's very form-fitting, especially in the crotch. That'll stand out. Definitely, you have some thigh rotation, you got the knees, and you have some swivel at the boots as well. So that is nice to see. And then one other hiccup for me, like the ab crunch, is that the feet are kind of odd. And I will say that they look to go up and back. Do they exactly side to side to get that whole momentum? No, not really. He does have peg holes on the bottom. So it kind of sort of works, but then it's kind of sort of limited at the same time. Again, is that a huge problem? Not really, but for a character like Spider-Man, I kind of expect a little bit more articulation like you can do with Marvel Legends, right? But then you have to factor in he's wearing cloth suits. They kind of have to change things up, how it moves, how it functions. It's a whole different system. But for what it is, for how this Spider-Man looks, the classic nature, especially the accessories, this is a pretty fun Spider-Man. And for the price, you don't really need to buy any more Spider-Mans. But if you have a Marvel Legends collection, like I know many of you do, this Spider-Man, being that he's a little bit smaller, will go quite nicely as a more classic Spider-Man. Kind of borderline animated, kind of, sort of. Now, this is the Mezco Spider-Man I've had for quite some time. It was my first Mezco figure, and I really like this Spider-Man, and I still do. But in looking at this new amazing classic Spider-Man... I kind of like this one a whole heck of a lot better now. And to have him lined up with Ghost Rider and, of course, Wolverine, he's a bit on the short side. I don't really think that Mezco figures are all that interested in scale a lot of times, and I really don't look to Mezco for scale. I kind of just pick out the characters that I truly like, and if it looks good, that's when I jump on the Mezco bandwagon, right? So in that sense totally works. Now, if you have stayed throughout this video, thank you very much for wasting all that time <laughs> with me. But let's talk about Entertainment Earth. Appreciate you. Let me do my spiel. I got my amazing Spider-Man from Entertainment Earth. They ship fast. They ship great. They have a lot of great sales, especially for some of you waiting on Super 7. Now is the time to strike. I'm just saying. But if you're interested if an item is in stock, you will get 10% off with my links. I'll put those down in the description below. The items must be in stock to get that 10% off. And if you spend over 79 bucks, you will get free shipping as well. So if you order a bunch of stuff, one or two things are in stock, right? You'll get a percentage off. A couple of things are pre-orders. You won't get a percentage off. That's how it works. In stock only. Over 79 bucks, you get free shipping. They always ship great. They usually ship first. I will say that. That's a great aspect of Entertainment Earth. And I use them myself. If you are interested in anything Mezco, Super 7, which there's a lot of sales going on, or anything Marvel, definitely check out Entertainment Earth. I guarantee you'll find something there that you like. So that will wrap it up for my look. This wasn't a quick look, but at least it's an in-depth look at the new The Amazing Spider-Man Mezco 112th Collective action figure. It has some issues where I would say, well, I really wish it had a little bit more articulation. Not a huge stickler for articulation, but for a character like Spider-Man, it is welcome. I have OCD about the suit. Yes, it's totally fine, nothing ripped, but over time, give it some time. <laughs> Just don't go crazy with the suit. All the hands, all the webs, all the accessories, everything that you could imagine for this Spider-Man is there, and it also lights up. You'll never need another Spider-Man, but I will say this. It is expensive, and in terms of what you get with Marvel Legends at their price point, they have a solid Spider-Man as well, but you don't have those key accessories that I expect with Spider-Mans. So, you've heard my thoughts, and now I'm curious to know yours. Comment below, let me know. Let's talk everything Spider-Man, 
And I'm going to leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food, but most importantly, remember, sound off down in the comments below for all you Mezco collectors. What's a Mezco figure that you would highly recommend? Past, present, or perhaps future, depending on when you see this video. And when you do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.